we're entering into the phase in which we are actually making a decision what we will do with technology. Uh, at the same time, we all understand that democracy needs something which is, let's call it version 2.0 or at least something a little bit more that it is not about, it is not only for uh, like 20 years ago when Berlin Wall was falling down, it was to give the democracy, Western style democracy to the rest of the world. That was the idea. Now we realize that actually that idea is kind of not so, so attractive to the rest of the world because we need also to re-engineer and restructure and rethink democracy in the West. And in that context, technology, and I will just say a few words about it. The technology is, how do I see technology? I see technology as a tool, nothing else but a tool. A demean is something which we call knowledge and education. And I want to make connection between tools, means, but the most important thing, goals. What are our goals? And we have to see, and democracy is in the broadest context, the framework in which we are putting together these things all around. So what are our major, major problems today? I think that our problems, our goals are, basically speaking, uh, coming out of our problems today. I think that the biggest problem of today's world is something which we call inequality. And inequality, inequality along different lines. First, inequality, and I see inequality as a problem. And on the other side, I see fighting inequality as a goal. So inequality, first element of inequality is social income inequality, which is basically speaking about inclusion. Inclusion is our first problem and first goal. Shall we move in the direction of inclusive or exclusive societies? So let's call it social I, inequality. Inclusion, I'm sorry. Social I of inequality, which is inclusion. Social I of economics is income. Distribution of income, and I won't talk so much about it because we are familiar with economic inequality along the different lines. The third element of inequality is legal inequality, which is third eye, injustice. We are witnessing injustice in different parts of the world and inside societies, inside organized states. The fourth inequality is political inequality, and political inequality, I'm talking about identity. I, identity. Will we be able to, to, to celebrate our different identities and actually guard them and guard our own identities by guarding others' identities? and may, helping them to flourish and helping them to be together with us. The next element is physical, physical inequality, which is called insecurity. And today, we are witnessing, the, especially when it comes to the social media, we are witnessing the fact that, um, it's bizarre, but one of the latest studies that I saw in the United States, Gallup studies just a few months ago, was ask, uh, asking the question, would you give up your privacy for security? in context of, of actually Big Brother. And it's astonishing. It's astonishing how many people would give up privacy for security, which is opening completely new Pandora box. And I won't talk about it, I'll just knock on that door. Uh, last two, last two uh, inequality problems are something which I call IT, or interconnectivity, or technological inequality. And technological inequality together with innovation inequality, which is about knowledge and education, is leading us to not the goals, but leading us to tools and means. I think that education and knowledge has to be seen as a mean, and information technology and technology, and especially artificial intelligence, is giving us reason to think that we have tools. But go back to square one. <coughs> what do we do with our means? What do we do with our tools and means, we do run to solve the problems and hit the goals. So we have to go back to the goals every time, and especially because, uh, let me put it this way, uh, when it comes to, 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 to that technological, let's say, uh, <coughs> technology aspect of it, as I said, difference in between atomic bomb and computer was already <coughs> tackled. But now computers, I cannot say no more to my students that computers are no, are no use. Because of artificial intelligence, especially artificial super intelligence, especially about singularity that is knocking on our door. So we may come to the point in which actually the boxes 
will decide what we will do. Or at least, let's talk about it so it doesn't happen. Sure. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. Because we are still in the driver's seat. And I'll conclude with it. I'll conclude with it. Uh, my favorite, my favorite uh, uh, classification of American presidents was given to me by one friend over a very nice dinner. He was telling me about four American technology presidents. He was telling me about four American presidents who were elected as a result of technology. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the history would be definitely different if those four guys would be different four guys. Bad or worse, I don't know, I don't care. It's irrelevant because it's history. First technology president was Roosevelt who actually used the radio through his famous fire chats with the families to go directly to the, his constituency, stepping over senators and congressmen. And actually, he didn't have to, to campaign for his second term at all, because he was actually campaigning on the radio every Monday night. Monday night football game. Football was, I mean, probably a succession of that period when Roosevelt was gone, and they decided to broadcast football a Monday night football game. So uh, radio was actually the first technology that made president to talk directly to the people. And we have even those old black and white movies when the families are s sitting around the fireplace and talking to a president. Basically speaking, he's telling them something. The second president was, we all know that, I mean, famous, famous TV president Kennedy. And without TV, he wouldn't win. The history would be different. He would definitely not be killed. But that's another story. The third president, technology president, was Obama, who actually used internet to completely restructure the <coughs> campaign. And he used the power of internet by basically speaking, reaching to a lot of acti activists. And he was one of the first presidents, Democrats, who collected more money by a lot of people, little money by a lot of people, no. than not focusing on small amount of people for big money. He used internet and the rest was history. And of course, the last technology president was the current one. Because, I mean, without Twitter, the history would be different. Uh, my question is, uh, who is going to be fifth American president? Fifth American technology president. And what will be technology? Definitely not radio, definitely not TV, definitely not internet, definitely not Twitter. What is it going to be? Is it going to be, as we are witnessing now from, from Cambridge Analytics, is it going to be something which will be combination of it? But it's already seen because Trump used it. Except Twitter. So what will be the AI president? Or, or let me put it this way, will next American president, technology president, will be elected by artificial superintelligence? So maybe artificial superintelligence is going to make decisions without us being interfered. Or it could be even worse that the next a technology American president because artificial superintelligence itself. So, so we don't know. But I'm just trying to open open Pandora box with it. And concluding with what uh, uh, my dear friend Momi was talking about regulation. I think that the big battle is going on right now when it comes to the regulation. And maybe the best the best example <coughs> of that is uh, uh, yesterday's article in New York Times made by Tom Wheeler, chairman of U.S. Federal Communication Commission from 2013 to 2017, a very interesting guy who is now uh, our colleague in Harvard. Uh, he started his, uh, his, his, his article, was, the title is, Can Europe Lead the Way on Privacy? And he was talking about regulation. He was talking about two approaches of regulation when it comes to the media, social media, uh, specially moved, just triggered by Cambridge Analytics. And he's using the one pager that uh, Zuckerberg uh, advertised in major, major press, which he said that uh, we have a responsibility to protect your information. If we can't, we don't deserve it. <coughs> that was the quote of Zuckerberg. And Wheeler rightly said, it is not whether IT companies deserve our private information, but why we have no ways to protect ourselves. Why we have to depend on their mercy. Do they deserve or not? What if they don't deserve and they have it? And what if they deserve? Does it mean that they deserve to run our lives? And that's the reason why he's talking about a very interesting point, that uh, in US regulators, uh, companies are saved by lengthy uh, and coercive le legalities and cumbersome opt-out processes. Basically speaking, some plays in that, that, in that screen that you see, some plays with little size, it says, you can opt out. <laughs> 
that they don't use, that they, they are not allowed to use it. So basically speaking, it is enough to put it someplace in your screen that, I mean, you have to decide. If you don't do it, then you actually accept it that they are on you. Uh, uh, these days, EU is starting May 2018. There is general data protection regulation, which is ensuring consumers' private information and tools to exercise that control, including using your explicitly opt in, which basically speaking, you have to really before going into any details. So that's the different concept of regulations. I'm not saying that that's enough, but that's a starting point. And what he's actually, uh, of course, uh, because that was his time, uh, uh, in, and he's saying that in 2016, FCC imposed similar requirements with explicit, explicit opt-in for having personal data collected and protect collected information. And you know what happened? A few days ago, current president signed a bill that was adopted in Congress, which is actually forbidding FCC, even there, to describe, to prescribe such things. Of course, uh, it was bipartisan thing, uh, run by Comsa Comcast, by AT&T, by Google, by Facebook, because they made a, such a strong pressure that actually these days we have in Europe opt-in, and in the US we have opt-out. So these are both things are regulated. The question is what we will do with it. And uh, of course, I'll stop here. Thank you. Gary.